Alright, y'all ready? Um, we're ready. So, <laughs> some I'm nobody to understand. So we're down. Yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna give you. Yeah, I ain't mad at you. Y'all ready? Oh, yes. Okay, okay. I'll get the card. Well, I think to teach a man to hate himself is much more criminal than teaching him to hate someone else. And look at you. Who taught you to hate yourself? Look at it. Angel food cake is white. Devil food cake, you say, is black. The only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger. But we, we are never taught about any black hero. Only someone we're shown in history is my grandfather was picking cotton. Cotton picking don't move me. Give us a blonde hair, blue eyes, pale skin, buttermilk complexion, Jesus, in contradiction to the black Jesus with left his hair in the Bible. Our own babies, according to behavioral, sci behavioral scientists, our baby girls, when confronted with choosing but with choosing between a black dog and a white dog, there's been so much damage done. They choose the white dog and say the black dog is us. I'm a filmmaker. I'm come over here from Portland, and uh, we are doing a, a number of different stories on dealing with negative media images against African Americans. Mm -hmm. Put your fist in the air and salute the legends of hip hop, partner. Salute,
we're trying to do is raise the conscious level of people and get you to understand that we're in control of our own destiny from this day forward. So those we're going to control the images that our people see. Atlanta. is glorifying black folks in a good way, in a bad way, you know, um, and if it is, you know, if it's glorifying in a negative way, what are some of the, what are some of the television shows that are glorifying, you know, or are showing our buffoonery? Or if there are some positive things in the media, what are they? So anybody like to go first? Let's not all speak of it once now. All right, all right. It's, there's a huge dichotomy to me, and I, you know, I kind of understand where some of the cats come from as far as, you know, a lot of the, a lot of rappers that that are popular now, you know, grew up poor, didn't have anything, you know, didn't have much, and so all of a sudden they're cats from not having anything to having as much money as they want, having as many, you know, having as many cars as they want, you know, having as many women as they want. So you know, when you go from nothing to having something, they just kind of feel the need to um to brag about it, and they feel the need to talk about it. So a small part of me understands where that comes from, but then the other side of me says, well, yeah, I'm happy for you and your. We gotta move. Like, right now we've been escorted off the property of the underground in Atlanta. I'm not filming right now, man. I'm just doing my damn job. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, we actually shooting something positive. Well, if you tell me something on the management, man. What do you think about that? Well, you know, I don't do too much like cops anyway. So I'm not surprised that that happened. A little bit disappointed, not very surprised. Take off the mouse, but the words are still gonna come. Alright, so we out the property now? <laughs> we out the property? Alright, there you go. Okay, okay. We off the property. Uh, we're we're now off the property. What, what were you saying before? You just said, you know, if, if what happened, if, if, if You know, we were just saying that if MJG. if M eight ball and MJG or Ludacris had been down here <laughs> filming some security with them trying to get in the video. We were trying to do something positive, they kicking us off. What's up? We're here in Boston. Um, this is uh, Johannesburg Part Two here. <laughs> These, uh, the popo here is ruthless, but um, irregardless of that, we was just talking about there's a black governor here, and um, for all those that really truly believe in the system and this process, um, we're gonna see if that makes any kind of difference in the lives of black people here. Um, well, Malcolm did some soldiering. But black people have been. Uh, brutally murdered and beat to death here in this uh, ungodly city of um, 
Boston, Massachusetts. Yep. Okay, this is Professor Griff. Like I said, we're downtown Boston. And this has become some kind of a unwritten kind of cultural thing in hip hop that you got to get your gold, platinum fronts. Now, I don't know what class that this signifies, whether or not what kind of gold or platinum grill that you have to have, depending on where you are on the social ladder. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it's a lot of you can get the same day grill, you can get diamonds put in it, you can get fangs, as Method Man teaches us, you can get the Flavor Flav joint, you understand what I'm saying? And it's critical, critical how in the Flavor of Love, he passes on uh, some gold platinum fronts to the woman that he ultimately wants to be with. I don't understand the significance behind that, but maybe we need to dig deeper into that. Because here, you can get the Flavor Flav grill in the same day, you understand what I'm saying? Um, we gotta explore this. Matter of fact, excuse me, sir. What's the yeah. significance of having a grill? If you ain't got no teeth. Okay. He's basically saying if you ain't got no teeth, it's best to get a grill. So I guess you can look halfway attractive or something. But uh, yeah, we thank you, dude. <laughs> Later. Peace, peace, peace. In the divine line of things and how things are going. Today in Boston, now check this out on the real. I didn't book myself at this hotel here. This nice fine hotel. The Omni Park of House. Opio did that. And <laughs> ironically, Malcolm X was a busboy at this hotel as he speaks about right here. It's critical. Hey, Opio. Just let me know when you're there. Ladies and gentlemen, I would first like to thank everybody for coming out today so that we could talk about an issue that is very important in the black community. I would first like to thank the Community College of Baltimore County for giving us the opportunity to use this venue as a place where we can hold this event. I would like to thank all the distinguished guests and people that are speaking on the podium. We will, um, bring all of them up shortly. But let me first explain why we are all here. Most of us have been familiar, most of us are probably watching a lot of things on TV as of late. And really there's a lot of outrage in the black community, a lot of outrage in the conscious community, and a lot of people who see that the negative images that are placed on TV are really detrimental and more harmful to our people than something that's constructive. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna allow the different speakers to talk about this issue that is very pertinent, this issue that is very serious, and something that all of us who came out to speak, and even hopefully you who um, came out in support of this event, feel is something that's very necessary. tradition there in hip hop that we in this room know nothing about. The early days, because who could tell me everybody's name in Cold Crush? Oh, How about Treacherous 3? Oh, I can no. tell you everybody is Treacherous 3. Yes. Sunshine, Cool Moe B. Right? And, um, See, but you would know. Yeah. But what yeah. I know. Yeah. What's your earliest recollection? Yeah. 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 What's your earliest recollection? What recollection of hip hop? What was that defining moment for you when you first heard hip hop? Where were you at? What was you doing? This is when I was at, you know, the Blue Hair Boy and the Girls Club, when, you know, they have community day, like mm -hmm. out there on the porch and stuff like that, you know, we all get together and stuff. Right. And then it was the first time I heard Game Master J. Mm. Game Master J got me on to it. Oh, okay, that's cool. So you heard it from a DJ perspective. Yeah. That's very important, because everybody in this room needs to know that's how hip hop began. It was not about the MC. Nah. It was always about the DJ in the park. Really? The MC picked up the mic to big up the DJ all the time. So it was about the DJ. That art is lost. 
Yeah. There's a song now. That's my DJ. That's yeah. my, with no G, DJ in the no, song. No, yeah, yeah, Lil Wayne. In the video, yeah. Yeah. which is sad. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So what was your earliest recollection? First person that really, the first artist that I really like fell in love with. Cause Will Smith, real talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 well, that's good. Fresh Prince was hot. Right, right, exactly. Fresh Prince was really like okay, and like, cause I mean at that time I was young too, so I mean him coming out with stuff like parents don't understand. I mean that's something I could I could vibe with, cause I mean right. I'm young too coming. He currently serves as director of the Institute for Urban Research at Morgan University. So with a nice round of applause and a warm acceptance, let's bring up Dr. Ray Winbush. Thank you. Thank you. I wrote my remarks so they'll be brief. Uh, the magic Negro in the movie The Green Mile. Step and fetch it. Another bad creation. Mantan Moorland. Grills on their teeth, white gloves on their hands, grinding on BET, buck dancing in front of Massa on the plantation. It's all the same. It's all white supremacy. It hasn't changed. It's global. <coughs> the violent, sexual, dangerous, compliant, silly, stupid, castrated, and mysterious black person is a powerful image that is now over 500 years old. This anxiety gave birth to a nation of vicious and unprovoked attacks on Africans in America during the past 200 years. Ask Emmett Till, ask James Byrd Jr. I think hip hop in its purest form would have checked that. Oh, you don't think that there's a oh, mechanism in hip hop that would check itself? There used to be. Are like, you know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, we had PE. And we and at the same same time we had NWA. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then Q came over and got down with PE. You know what I'm saying? It out, and right. it balanced it out. You had too short. You know what I'm saying? But you also had poor righteous teachers. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You had YZ, but, but you, you had there's no balance now. There's no balance. Well, um, my man Andre 3000. All right. That's a brother who didn't finish high school. All right. Like he went back, got his got his diploma, and then went to college. Right, right. But he's not rapping about that. You know what I'm saying? But wow. you do hear these cats rapping about not finishing school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You hear that all yeah, the time. Yeah, we that like a bad, like right, right, that's that's cool. Yeah. I went to jail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, when I came up, if you was hot, yo, son, you got to bounce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you had respect for your crew, if you was hot, you didn't come around. Cats might be looking for your team, man. What's up? Yo, man, I'm hot right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm laying low. You don't, you don't need to be around me. Now I'm hot. They out on the block. What up? <laughs> are the crucial point in our growth and development. That's right. We are now the generation of freedom fighters. So we must be cognizant about the messages that we consume. We must be duty bound to our purpose. That's right. We are the generation of fulfillment. Fulfilling what? Well, we're fulfilling the answers to our ancestors' prayers. We're fulfilling the time, our minds, are so filled up with filth and indecency that it keeps us distracted from our purpose. Who is the, who's the head honcho of Viacom? Did anybody know that? Not black and Latino. It ain't black and Latino. <laughs> we know that, right? <laughs> it's definitely not us, right? Okay, so um, as, as, some of, as we all know, Viacom um, took over BET, MTV, VH1, and all, you know, some other channels as well, okay? So we also have, um, I know with BET, I don't know about y'all, but I grew up with BET when I was, you know, mm -hmm. younger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember seeing Video Soul, right. you know, with yeah. Donnie Simpson, yeah. you know? But it was cool because even my mother was, you know, like watching it too, right. you know? Oh. So, right, right, right. All right, last question. Yeah. The ultimate greatest hype man ever in hip hop. Flavor Flav! 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 Say that one more time. Flav! 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 On the hype tip. Why not Flavor Flav? That dude, when you talk about controlling the crowd, that's a man who can control the crowd when he gets on that stage with that mic in his head and starts doing his little boogie dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So straight up, yo. Fresh Fest, number one. Yeah, just watch, watch. 
You out, y'all out there doing your thing, all right? And then, he came, then that cold lamp and came up first. Terminator did his thing. Biggie, you know, I mean, he got biz. And then they threw on that cold lamp and, and Flav came out with the clock about this Ooh. big, son. And, and, and it was right, it was right, yo, it was right, yo, it was right there in Providence. You might not remember, but he hit you with the clock. <laughs> and you stopped what you was doing and looked at him and then went back to the SWs and told, you know what I'm saying, and went back to your thing, caught him in routine, and went right. back to your thing. Okay. Yo, but this dude rocked the crowd. He had us, he had us thick out there. Right. Just crazy for like five minutes, just hyping the crowd, hyping the crowd to that cold lamp and joint. Oh, Never okay. forget that, man. There you go. That's, see, that's what we need, the pornet look. Okay, so you need the Not the box look. The box look was probably the, the first uniform, and then they kind of got better as they went along. You know, some upgrades or the split of down there, Pratt, I'll get hurt. <laughs> Do you know what it means to yeah. have a revolution? Uh, and what it takes to make a solution? Still fighting against oppression. Oh yeah. We're battling our depression. Oh yeah. On pork and poison meat. I recognize the beast, spit the mark of the gold heat. Puffing the roll leaf and then busting these police. Where y'all players are faking bacon, we cook the whole beef. I put it down plain. I stimulate that left and right brain, baby. Cell by cell and frame by frame. Names, dates, it's all immaterial. We big, big, sick rhyme killers like cereal. I burn like venereal. I spit that imperial wizardry. You climb right through the circuitry and choke your team for their cream. Now that's as far as we go. Drop, drop it like seagulls and smash a little ego. Got vision like Stevie and Coleco Give me 2,000 live people One lay show with no sequel No equal in the flesh Is one of these Malcolm X's window where he slept? Yes sir, uh, uh Well, you know, he was going to cross the two again Those two windows up top That was his uh, Little private area apartment Up top uh, My parents made a private area For him up top To the, uh, to the Right was a uh, little dinette kitchen seating area. Right. To the left, there was a bedroom, and then back further up there it was, uh, uh, you know how the room was shaped, the attic area, that was his living room. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and if he wanted to have, you know, a little private uh, session, but he came downstairs. And, you know, that was just as he wanted to come. Right. He was throughout the house. And then he went to school here in Boston. He went to uh, up here on which was Townsend Street, uh, he uh, went to Townsend Street Baptist Church. Okay, I got something to ask you. Time. Earlier we was at, I'm, stay, I was, I'm staying at a hotel, uh -huh. Omni Parker Hotel. Omni, um, yes, yeah, he was there. He was a porter. Right, and there's a plaque out there, there's, yeah, a, there's yeah. a thing in the window. Yeah. And you know who else was there? Ho Chi Minh! Ho Chi Minh! The house beautiful thing and talking to his relative, the guide here, is a very beautiful thing, getting those valuable lessons, you understand what I'm saying? So for a young man like me to come see where Malcolm did his thing, it's very monumental, man. It's almost, it almost brings tears to your eyes to know that our people couldn't put a hedge around Malcolm to support and protect Malcolm. Imagine if Malcolm and Martin was here today, you understand what I'm saying? That's how dynamic it is. But um, we're here in Boston, Massachusetts, we're right on the corner of the cultural center. Maybe, maybe we'll come back a year from now or, or five years from now and just see when it's done. You understand what I'm saying? To see our, the education of our people in the cultural center. Peace, yeah, yeah, Professor Griff, yeah. Public Enemy, Minister of Information. Wow. I pray that God will bless you in everything that you do. I pray that you will grow intellectually so that you can understand the problems of the world and where you fit into in that world picture. Code. 
four saved messages. Main menu. Listen one. Send first saved message. Uh, no need to uh, get back to me. Uh, you guys are a bunch of assholes. Uh, if I could uh, get my hands around your neck, I'd just bounce you off a wall. Fucking jerk off. If somebody wants to go to a congressman, they can do it. But uh, promoting this like this, you're all shit. I have no respect for you. Fuck off, guys. Replay 4. Erase. Set. Saved. Next message. I think what you people are doing is appalling. What you are doing is political. You ought to be embarrassed and ashamed and act like Americans from now on, not give the appearance of having a yellow streak down your back. I surely like, would like to have one of you people call me, but I know you won't. It's the nature of you people. Replay 4. Oakland got it going on, man. Some serious revolutionary. Yeah. Oakland already turned off channels, girl. We don't even need to speak to Oakland. to another edition of the Block Report with the Minister of Information, J.R., the POCC. Today, our guest is Chairman Fred Hampton, Jr. of the Prisoners of Conscience Committee, the international chairman, who is going to be talking to us about the continuing counterinsurgency attacks that he's been faced with and his second arrest this year. Chairman Fred, I know that you was recently arrested, and I know this is part of the continuing counterinsurgency among our people, as well as upon the POCC as a whole. Can you tell us the details of this particular arrest and how does it relate to the last one that just went down regarding the street party? Right on. First and foremost, let me say um, revolutionary appreciation and greetings to yourself and the rest of the comrades, to the people in general. The fact is that pigs, you know, so they've either been popping me up or, or popping at me, one or the other. In other words, they've been uh, keeping me in the cell or trying to put me in the grave. In fact, with the last arrest, the pigs actually commented, I'm quoting them, we're going to get you to the streets one way or another. This is the side show. One of the reasons why we started producing a mixtape radio show where we freely distribute in the D.C. area a mixtape that is meant to serve as a source of emancipatory journalism that combines the kind of hip-hop that we are now prevented from hearing, the kind of hip-hop that I grew up on, the kind of hip-hop that allowed me to or have grown the seeds of radicalism that had been implanted in me by my parents, uh, and the kind of hip hop that has, again, been prevented from rising to popular consciousness, uh, because I am particularly the kind of person that are, they are trying to prevent from coming into uh, existence, from growing up, from coming into an understanding of who you are and who we are and our relationship to this society. And media play a primary role in this. Last post. I got them about a... Uh... Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. You made that? That's hot. They ain't ready. Yeah, I'm ready for this. Ready for they, this? they, 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 they ready for this too. right now. The world should be ready for this all over again. That's right. This should be in the film. Well, the last posts are bigger than the last poets. The last post is an institution that goes way beyond myself or any of the individual members of the group. Uh, just the idea that some cats would come along and give themselves a the name, Last Poets, and then seal that name with a poem from a South African poet. This is when you hear is the birth of memory. When the moment hatches in time's womb, there will be no more art talk. The only poem you'll hear will be the spear point pivoted into the punctured marrow of the villain and the timeless native son dancing like crazy to retrieve rhythms of desire fading in the memory. Therefore, we are the last poets of the world. And in essence, we're saying that once you hear our message, you either move in the direction that this message is trying to help you go or you be moved by the direction that the people are being are moving in because there's going to be some change 
this is this is your last chance. It's like the last pillar to represent the movie, a great movie I saw one time. It's a document. It's on a documentary level. It's called The Battle of Algiers, and and the Algerian uh, people were getting the French out of their country, and they meant they were gonna do it by any means necessary, and. Um, they, they knew first that before they could even really successfully get rid of the French, they had to clean up their community. And so they went to the, to the pimps and, and, and his hoes and they said, you got two weeks to clean up, get off the street. And the pimps laughed, the hoes laughed, said, okay, fine, whatever. They go to the drug dealers and say, you got two weeks to stop selling drugs, get off the street. They didn't, they said, all right, yeah, right, sure. Came back two weeks later, they were still doing their thing, and they all got blown away. That's the last poets. New York is the heartbeat to hip hop. So where, where hip hop is globally, New York controls the heartbeat. If you put your finger on the pulse of hip hop, that's New York. Against it or for it, because honestly, 
let them deregulate it. We don't own it now. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to push us to get further into internet radio and promoting community radio already. So me right here, it's more of a rallying it up the troops for me, where I'm trying to meet people like Brother Opio, meet my brother like Beats Me and Distortion of Static TV. I'm trying to meet other soldiers on the field. So that's really why I'm here, as well as we researching what the people think and seeing where we at in the war. Is we ready to go round for round? Or we still got to go into the gym and lift some weights and get our people politically educated to know what this fight is about. So that's really what this is about for me. And this is what it is for the POCC and the Black Report. Because it's not no media reform that we're going to be happy with. Only a revolutionary media is the only thing we happy with. And that's when we own it. There ain't no such thing as no corporation owning it. So Minister of Information, Black Report Radio, Marriott Hotel in Oakland, FCC hearings. And you know, we out. I totally respect the mission and the mission of the cops, but unfortunately, they're subjected to partisan politics. See, there are two Democrats, two Republicans, and the chairman is also a Republican. So, even though we're fighting this battle here, they might get outvoted when we go back. But one thing for sure is, the FCC can enforce federal law. Payola is breaking the law. Let's investigate. Let's get it done and take some licenses away. All the videos nowadays, it's all about booty shaking. It's yeah. about having sex and make, doing all these negative things that we don't need to be seeing on TV. We don't need to see that. And you're talking about TV shows? Let's get to it. Flavor of love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Flavor of love. I've only seen that show for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and that was enough. I was appalled. I was shocked. I was floored by what I saw. I'm like, here is a brother, Flavor Flav. Hip hop icon from Public Enemy up here pimping these women. Try, I don't even really know the whole concept, but I see all these women are trying to get with Flavor Flav, and I'm like, what Why? is going on? No. This is a man who came from Public <laughs> Enemy, right. a conscious Why? rap right. group. Right. I, I just don't know what's going on, and it's sad, and we need to do something about it. So I, I, um, I was very interesting. I had a um, gig at Baltimore City Community College a couple weeks ago, and in the waiting room, they had a TV, and there were three brothers in there watching the Flavor of Love. And I was, and they were really watching. They were, I mean, and I, and I could see that all that those three brothers, the chances of them getting a date was going to be difficult. They weren't, they weren't the kind of brothers that, 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 that kind of, I mean, let's be honest. They weren't the kind of brothers that were going to walk into a spot and the sister's going to say, ooh, that brother look hot. You know, that ain't happening. That ain't happening. These brothers were the kind of brothers walk in the spot and walk out, and nobody even know the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and so they were nondescript brothers, like but they were seemingly nice brothers. And but they were really watching flavor. Like wow, that was important. Her name is, is Wanda. Whistle. She has a number, or do how do I make that appointment? Okay, I'm the number here is 781. 781. 461. 461. 461. Uh-huh. 1600. Uh-huh. Extension 336. Okay. So she would be here more than anybody yes. else. Yes. Okay. We've allowed crack dealing to be acceptable. Uh, hustling, pimping, it's all acceptable. If somebody come up to me and say, what's up, pimping? I look at him like he just called me the worst thing you ever heard. That's worse than the N-word to me. And I let him know about it. We got to start standing up for consciousness. We got to let people know that it's not cool to do the things that they do. And if you're a crack dealer, you a blood-sucking vampire that I should punch in the mouth. You understand? It's not your man. We got so much love for the hood. But the hood don't love us. What the hell do we love about the hood? It ain't much to love about a place that you rent from. You don't own it. It ain't your hood. If, you, if it was your hood, what you pay rent for? As I put through this TV, this dichotomy in hip hop is glaring to me. Our black women are queens and have rightfully earned their crowns. Yet BET and MTV and VH1 have deemed that women look better without their crowns. 
or their clothes. When do we expect each other to be fair weather friends? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. about time for this nonsense to come to an end. Let's get together and send each other's kids to school and teach them how not to be just anybody's fool. Let's get together and make some Skrilla and keep each other from spending it on that number one killer. That's right. right. <laughs> Come on, black people. That's right. Let's cut the crap. I want to spit. All right. It's called Beautiful. Oh, there we go. Right here. Uh, Tuesday, this Tuesday, we are um, having a panel discussion um, about the same thing. Uh, Professor Griff from Public Enemy is going to be the moderator, and um, we also have a panel. We have Miss Wynn here, who is part of the panel as well, and we also have uh, Paul Porter. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Stanley, who is professor at Spelman College. And we're also going to have uh, Jordana James, who is the a teenager who founded Black Girl Magazine. Oh, um, yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. she's on it. She's on it. So um, we are going to have that. It starts at 5 o'clock. The use of approved portable electronic devices are now permitted. Welcome to... Uh DC Drama Magazine. We like to stimulate the conscious mind of uh, our audience. We pretty much spotlight some of the most amazing underground filmmakers who have so much to offer. Secondly, you know, we're really, really, really close to the genre of music, which is jazz. Um, we use the political spotlight, which is very important to us here at the DC Drama Magazine. Um, it's our voices, and it's going to be the type of politicians and the type of people in the community that are really fighting for the things that we're fighting for. And uh, those people usually don't get the kind of light they deserve. I'm a child of the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, the images I remember from the Civil Rights Movement, uh, the stories I remember from the Civil Rights Movement, the people who I first knew. This is not a one-man movement. It's time for you to do your part. And he looked at you, he looked at me. He looked at all of us. As we turn the shovel, we're just beginning to turn the dirt. And as we turn the dirt in this ground, let us go back to our communities and turn the dirt and provide a clean and pure lifestyle for our children. And let us make sure we keep on turning the dirt in Martin Luther King's name. God has blessed us through him. May we continue to pass on those blessings. Please, John Lewis, Dorothy Height, Martin, turn the dirt.
to center stage. Hey, I am. Can we start over? Okay, cut. All right. What's up? Okay, we're in Oakland. We've been to D.C. We've been to Baltimore. We've been to Atlanta. Spelman, shout out, y'all. Be more everybody. Love for Self is in the building, and we are about to go inside Center Stage Salon right here in Oakland, California. Bring people out, everything. We're gonna check out some commentary and give thanks to the sisters who've been holding this down for generations, over 10 years of business, right here. Plus. Stage. We're gonna talk to Miss Bobby. I think it's Miss Bobby, Miss Brenda, Miss Paula. That's who it is. Running center stage and all the stylists. So let's go. Ooh, it's a push. P U S H. Push. Hey, Miss Bobby. How you doing? Welcome to Center Stage. Thank you. miles high that can spot your shoestrings and tie. You can't see the weight when it's smuggling by. The man that buy is an agent. The man that spy is an agent. The man that supply is an agent. Deal with some snitches are contagion. It's a no win, no win, no win situation. Straight up, if you coming out with an album, you better mention a political prisoner in your credits, man. This is the kind of pressure we gotta put on anybody to knock anything over these airwaves, especially if we know them and we close to them, baby. You know and I know I'm a family's keeper, and there's no faith in me. Illuminati better change their plan, because I roll with Harlem World and 44th Street. Understand we as in we, eternity, affinity, Harlem World, you can't fail. Really people at this moment, but it also made us understand where we need to go. And there's a lot of cats that dwell on where we are and they say, like, I'm going to keep it real. Like, I'm going to keep the condition that the slave master put me in real. You know, I'm not going to try to change it. I'm going to just keep it the way it is. I'm going to keep the world together. I'm going to keep the fits and stairwells. I'm going to keep the degenerate lifestyle that the enemy put me in. And I'm going to keep that real. Truth in the way for truth. Because they what is the visual condition and the most basic elements and terms. And they had a philosophy on what they did. But these other cartoon characters, that's pop coffee, you know, like he makes pop coffee cartoon characters. Because when you when you bang it for nothing, you're not banging for anything that's uh, for a cause, then mm -hmm. what it amounts to is us continuing to go backwards. Mm -hmm. Hey, how's that doing? See, we wanted to let y'all know this ain't rehearsed, man. We got people coming down stairways and all that. This ain't rehearsed, this is real, man. You know? Police come here right now, throw us against the wall, kick us and all that. So we ain't letting it happen. You know, freedom of death. Y'all represent, you know, both sides of the coin. I'm like Malcolm, I'm like Tupac, I'm from the Shabazz and Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And we represent the lost souls that's out here on the street. We represent the ones with the change as opposed well to we represent the ones with the red, black, and green. You know, public enemy, what they were doing, it consists of really what was going on the face of the East Coast. In other words, in this song is called Express Yourself about expressing what was going on in the community. They did the police because there was police brutality back in 1989 and still police brutality now. So we look at a lot of just the negative or maybe the vulgar language that they're saying, but even the vulgar, there's a lot of messages and people that on the street, they don't know about Bill Valentine's or, or, or Dr. Cornell West and that type of stuff. But they know about a Tupac Shakur. They know about a mountain because they came from that same element. Let's look at somebody like Eminem. 
mm-hmm. they made it like he was a savior of hip hop. Oh, like this white guy, like he's hip hop. Just like Elvis for rock and roll. Come on, man. I mean, they, but that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. And we're so lovely as a people. What we say, I like Eminem. He's good because we're not evil people. So mm-hmm. if, if the guy's got right. any talent at all, brothers will endorse him. You have seven chakras. Before when we rap, just to be rapping to express ourselves, give you our point of view. We rap to the heart chakra. All right, you heard the term the green with envy, but we rap to the heart chakra. When Public Enemy came along, we did something deeper than that, and we started rapping to the crown chakra. Now, as it speaks about in the scripture, the fall of man, well, it's not talking about a man falling from heaven to earth. It's talking about the fall to here, to these two chakras. And now all the music that you're hearing are coming from these two chakras right here. These two chakras are responsible, right, for all the many things, your urges and your desires. Once you hear a song like Laffy Tapping and it hits these, the vibratory frequency hits these lower chakras and it sends that signal of the vertebrae to here, and it taps into that pituitary gland and sends out that hormone, and you start doing some of the stuff that you want to do on the dance floor, start dancing the music that's calling you bitches and hoes, mm-hmm. then we have a problem, right or wrong. Right so I say stop disrespecting hip hop, let's bring hip hop to its fallen glory back to here, can we do that? That's one of our goals tonight, we just all around the floor. <laughs> People, no, that's because people are ignorant. That's just that's how it is. Okay. Whether it's on TV or not on TV. Didn't seem like something. Did you not see her when she was cutting yeah. the chicken episode? I, I saw it. Okay. Yeah, like she, she was, was crazy. crazy. Like that's she just had nothing to do with TV. Now New York, she's another case. No, <laughs> she's special. She crazy too. I think she's yeah. like bipolar or something like that. So I'm what serious. is the controversy? It's just people being people. That that Japanese boy has is the perception that the German boy has, the Russian woman has, the girl in Nigeria has, South Africa, Chile has about all of us on the flavor of love. The flavor of love is showing the whole world who they think we are. They're telling us who we are as black women. When you travel abroad, whoever they see, I don't even know the names of the women on the show, they're gonna automatically connect it to you. And we've been discussing that all day. We are all accountable for the images that we see on television. They just being themselves. The people, you can walk outside, it's late, they come out here and yell 24 hours a day, cuss people out, not in their right mind. If you put that on TV, is that bad too? Um, but it's just life. At the same time, they still were being um, real conservative, of like um, explicit or. Um, like the bending over, yeah, and shaking, shaking the behind. Behind. Yes, All of that's, all of that's yes. unnecessary. Yes. I mean, that was. It's unnecessary, but it's just people being people. That's, that's who she is. She was being herself. You know what I'm saying? So what? That's tech. I started Black Girl Magazine because I felt African girl, African American girls need an outlet to express themselves. I started the magazine at 12 years old. I was reading Essence, I was reading Double XL, and my mother had a problem with me at 12 years old not having the understanding to comprehend both Essence and 12, I mean Double XL, that she took those magazines away from me because she said they had adult content in them. And so I decided that I would create a publication that would not only just show history, that would help show culture, education, entertainment, and style. And what I do, and I think which is a solution, is when I talk to celebrities, whether I talk to Nelly, whether I talk to Ludacris, whether I talk to Lauryn Hill, whether I talk to Venus and Serena Williams, or their father, I ask them, what is your responsibility to your community? And I ask them that because I feel that every celebrity, whether you are a celebrity or not, that you have a responsibility. I embarrassed the sister who, one who was asking how come I was coming down with little Kim so much. It was about five years ago. And uh, and, I, and she was like, this is the fourth grade. No, the fourth, I don't know, fourth, fifth, this is one. But they all, they, they getting beside themselves about that time. And uh, I said, um, I said, I said, what are you talking about little Kim? Like, she's important. I said, she's a hoe. She's nothing but a hoe. And the little girl started crying. I said, go downstairs right now. And I said, tell uh, the principal to call up here. And, and so when the principal <laughs> called upstairs, uh, he, I, I said, yes, I sent, I sent the girl downstairs. Call her mother. It says, uh, brother, do you want? I said, yeah, have her mother come in. And, and uh, they said, OK, like that. So I go downstairs, and her mother's downstairs. Who does she look like? Mm-hmm. Little Kim. And you know what? The principal and the and the sister, they both stand there waiting. So now what Brother Doom gonna say now? He see this, right? When the moms look just like little Kim. I said, that's why your daughter looks as acting like she's acting, because you looking like little Kim. I said, and that's productive? 
I said, this is the way you raise a child? This is how you raise your child? Looking like Luke Kim? Well, if I had you as my man, maybe I wouldn't dress like this. I said, never happen. I said, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. You are not ready. Well, Chris Rock did that rich, wealthy thing about, you know, well, Shaq's rich. You know, the guy who signs his check is rich. And you don't know who that guy is. The guy who signs off on all these shows and signs off, you know, how many people know about Jimmy Iovine at Interscope Records who's in a meeting with all the producers with Kwame. I was on this panel and Kwame said, Jimmy Iovine goes, and he says in the middle of the meeting with all the, you know, 50 and all his people, and he goes, you niggas love that gangster shit. And we just want more of that. I mean, and everybody this, you know, we talk about it on another panel, Guys, you know, Kwame was shocked that they brought it up. But he didn't say nothing. What, OJ, what, what, what? yeah, because he, he made 185000 on the track, but he brings it up at the Essence panel. And, and you know, in the day, that would have been, right. yeah. what do you mean? Monica Jensen Stevenson, a 60 Minutes producer, quit her job after the CBS News program refused to air the story she had uncovered relating to the covert drug trade. Her book, Kiss the Boys Goodbye, details how our intelligence community used the apparatus of the Palmia governmental agencies as a cover for the trafficking of opiates from the Golden Triangle. President Reagan appointed Reform Party founder and Texas billionaire Ross Perot to the President's Advisory Council on Foreign Intelligence. Reagan made Perot a special presidential investigator, looking into America's POW and MIAs from the Vietnam War. Ross took the job to heart and spent considerable time and money in pursuit of the quest. He was given special clearance and access. He asked questions and interviewed everyone he could find from Kiss the Boys Goodbye. Relations between Bush and Perot had gone downhill ever since the vice president had asked Ross Perot how his Palmia investigations were going. Well, George, I go in looking for prisoners, said Perot, but I spend all my time discovering the government has been moving drugs around the world and is involved in illegal arms deals. Muhammad in his last speech. 
The theme of that speech was no more Negro stuff. Underlined with revolution is the only solution. Are we going to galvanize and get brothers together and move on these people? Mm -hmm. And if we can't leave that with some sensible, amicable solution to deal with some of these problems, are we going to turn around and just whip their ass? What are we going to do? Bang for lack of African unity. Bang to take back the black community. Bang to build school buildings. Go now go and sum the Redstone's door of Walt Viacom. There's one scene in a movie which really influenced me to be a part of anything conscious. And that was this spook who sat by the door. There was a scene when the brothers took over a radio station. We sold I spoke y'all to my life to a law and we died for a time. Is, is there where I can speak to some of the stone? We also have to be media makers. One of the things that, that I try to stress here at Spelman with my students is you've got to go out and create some of these images yourselves. You have to be black women creating images of black men. Oh, Government getting scared to wait for people like the law box. They want us dead in jail, but we don't like the suffer. So, God, let's get ready to roam like Mike and Buffer. They approach us wrong, all hidden in the tax. Roaches would be gone before they get rid of blacks. What time? March! We must begin to attack those who finance the buffoonery of black people. I do not want, I have one child, one little girl. I don't want my daughter to look at television and see black women portray like, like whores. All our efforts that are targeting the existing structure must be met and, and balanced, if not uh, outdone by our efforts at developing alternative underground sources of information and press and done in a low-tech way. We have to act. We have to do something that is symbolic, something that is uh, that is significant to be able to make a change and a difference. Let's face, let's face, let's face, right face. Original salute, larger, right front. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Let's face, let's face, right face. Original salute, Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And if you want to be free from the images, that you see being portrayed of black people, we have to point out and uncover and pull the covers off of the hidden hand. I'm the type to spray sh and target you, but I'll shoot blacks like a racist photographer, cause I acknowledge the killers. That's why I've got cartridges that's large as Oliver Miller. The majority of us, they hold in cells. The ones that's free, NYPD murder wholesale. Cops are so trite. They think all blacks is left-handed. Cause we ain't got no rights. Only right to remain silent. Or you excel like the side and they claim you violent. I'm a conscious dude. Enormous tech in the gold gauge. Bush responsible for more death than old age. They shot, shot, shot over 50 times. True. 50 brothers, like Black Watch used to roll, be at somebody's show and start shaming it. It don't, it's not rocket science. It don't take money, it don't take nothing. It just take your dedication, wear it with your commitment, exactly. And put your particular fortitude. Exactly. That's what test, that's right. Rappers grab mics and curse to get paid. All I do is spit positive like a person with AIDS. I ain't the one to shut up if you're richer. In videos, all I see is negatives like undeveloped pictures. So it makes the youth envy the ball. But now you got somebody to look up to. Come on. AK got in the burner, it's June Cancun, aka Nat Turner. So you already know, man, I'm good with crime. I got Elijah and my man Gotti Valentine. Dang, this is how we doing it, man. You no know, shout out to New Black Panther Party, of course, shout out to the revolutionary struggle.
We need to get away from that. Right? We're tired of all these radio suckers who think it's cool to pimp our culture. We got some for you. Revolution is taking place all anywhere on the globe in history. There's always a few people that spark. There's not a whole lot of people. I've never seen a performer perform like James Brown, and right then and there, I knew that it, that that was exactly what I wanted to do for the rest of my life because of James Brown. I I love you. I'm here is because there is a, a large amount of negative media images against um, African Americans that comes out of Viacom mm -hmm. and um, from the Redstone is the person that we know we can talk to to get information to them that is really harmful to the African American community. Someone in this room right now can set the revolution off. I might set this off. You know why? But if you think about it, look at the science of it in the Matrix. It was like, yo, for that being the one, if you see an Asian, run. You understand what I'm saying? But until Neo got the confidence in himself, then you know what? I'm not running no more. Exactly. He, he manned up against the agent exactly. and he found that, wait a minute, I, I hung with him. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I am the one that I've been waiting for.
choice to say I want to hear some gangster stuff. Give me the choice to say I want to hear this. Don't just force feed me one style of music all day long. Flip it, you know, put a positive spin on it. Leader Stephen Biko, that the greatest weapon in the hand of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. Let your mind be a weapon for liberating our people and not a tool for white supremacy. Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks for the peace, man. All right, cool, bro. Hip hop was given to us like just ice. It started out with the message, just right. Then we could make some money. Drug money, the hood money, turn to corporate money. That's when the WA got larger than life. Pulled out the gun and put away the knife. Egg right opened the door. Meanwhile, uptown's definitely ready to blow. Heavy D was sandy. And the big daddy came was the da -da 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 smooth operator. And then Mr. Shan was beeping over the bridge. See you later, man. Rock M was truly gangster in the neighborhood. Ice T just as compared. East Coast, West Coast, when it was peace, this beat was just for Manise Galise. Blew it. <laughs>